Welcome boys and girls, happy Monday morning. Uh, welcome to week three of virtual learning. So by now you have this process down. Today we're going to be working on module 15, lesson one, and that's comparing fractions using concrete and visual models. The ICANN objective, which can be found on page 401 reads, I can use concrete and visual models to compare fractions. Now, boys and girls, we've been doing a lot of work with fractions and you've been doing a great job. We already know that a denominator names the total number of equal parts in one whole. And a numerator is the parts that we're counting or the parts that we're talking about or the parts that are shaded or unshaded or eaten, right? Um, we also have looked at area of shapes. Um, and used fractions to describe that area. Now we're going to add on to that. And instead of looking at fractions independently or by themselves, we're gonna take a look at fractions and we're gonna compare them to other fractions. We're probably going to see symbols that mean greater than and less than and equal to. And I'm sure you're all familiar with these symbols. But before we get started on this module, I would like for you to take five to 10 minutes to complete the Are You Ready on page 400. You're going to pause the video, complete it, and when you're finished, come back to us. Okay, welcome back. So that should have been pretty simple, boys and girls. We're reviewing skills that you're very familiar with. So let's take a look at the are you ready, just in case there are a few misconceptions that I can clear up for you. So complete these problems to review prior concepts and skills you will need for this module. Compare numbers, write less than, greater than, or equal to. Now we have these three signs here, okay? And I know a lot of you have told me, oh, Miss Gomes, you know, it's like an alligator mouth with teeth and it faces the biggest number. It always wants to eat the biggest number. And that's a great way to remember it. But remember, boys and girls, this is a math symbol. So when you're using it in math, I don't want to see the little teeth, okay? Uh, also, we did uh, Pac-Man the other day. So we can think of Pac-Man, right, wanting to eat the most amount of points. But again, when we're working with math, we can use that as a tool to remember, but we want to make sure that we're using the correct symbols. And the correct symbols look like this, less than, greater than, and equal to. Okay, so for number one, we're comparing the numbers 42 and 36. Okay, we can tell by our base 10 blocks that the number 42 has four tens, and the number 36 has three tens. Since 42 has an extra 10, um, it is greater than 36. I don't even have to look at my ones place because the value of a 10 is greater than the value of a one. So 42 is greater than 36. For number two, you have the number 25 and the number 27. They each have the same amount of tens. And in these two numbers, the tens is the greatest place value. So that's what we're comparing first. So they each have the same amount of tens. So now we look over at the ones place. The 25 has five ones and the 27 has seven ones. So the 27 has two extra ones than the 25. So 27 is greater than 25. But if I'm reading it from left to right, 25 is less than 27. And I could write that in words to help me remember how to read it. 25 is less than 27. Okay, the next part, locate numbers on a number line. What number is just after 34? Well, here's my 34 on my number line, and let me switch my color. Here's my 24, 34 on my number line. The number right after it would be one jump to the right, and that number is 35. What number is just before 32? So now I'm at 32. The number before it, or one jump to the left, is a 31. 
what number is between 37 and 39? So here I have 37 and here I have 39. So the number in between would be that number that comes in the middle and that number is 38. Mark each number on the number line and we did that. Okay, and now let's review a little bit about fractions. Write the fraction that names the shaded part of the whole. So we want a, a fraction for the shaded part. Well, let's start with number seven and let's start with our denominator. I know that my square has one, two, three, four equal parts. So my denominator is going to be a four and only one of those parts is shaded. So my numerator is going to be one. Number eight, let's count how many total equal parts I have to make that whole shape. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So I know that my denominator is going to be an eight. By the way, boys and girls, it has eight equal sides on the outside. So it's an octagon, okay? And now for my numerator, I have one, two, three of those eight parts are shaded. So three eighths are shaded. And then on to number nine, let's look at our denominator again. I have one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts to make a whole. And one, two, three, four of those parts are shaded. So four sixths of the circle is shaded. And boys and girls, you see how I make little marks on each part? That just helps me to count all my parts without missing any or without counting any parts over again. Okay, now let's do a little vocabulary review. Okay, we're just going to review the symbols and what they mean. So when you have the symbol in green, okay, that is stands for greater than. And that means that the number to the left is going to be greater than the number to the right. When you have this symbol, it stands for less than. And that means that the number to the left is going to be less than the number to the right. And our equal to symbol. Okay. It just shows an equality between two sides. We've done this a lot in math where I've, where I've told you to think about a scale and making a scale even and the equal sign being in the middle. And that's all it really does, boys and girls. It doesn't matter if you have um, an, an addition, you know, five plus three on the left and then you have four plus four on the right. It doesn't matter that you have... Um, a single digit number or if you have part of a problem on each side, uh, as long as the equal sign is balancing both sides out. So I think you're ready to get into our lesson. Okay, so go ahead and turn to page 401 and follow along with us. Okay, boys and girls, let's start with the build understanding. And I'm going to do two reads and I really hope that you do the third read on your own. Um, and as you know, on our first read, boys and girls, we are making a movie in our heads. We're thinking what the situation is about so that we can better understand what's going on before we look at the quantities. So number one, the Jasper City Parks Department marks off three fourths of its south rink for family skating. In the north rink, three eighths of the space is used for family skating. Both rinks are the same size and shape. Use a concrete or visual model to show and compare the parts of the rinks that are used for family skating. So what is going on in this problem? Well, there's a lot of information. Without looking at the quantities, I know that there's a parks department and they have family skating, so ice skating. And I know that they have a south rink and a north rink and they break it up differently. So now I'm gonna do the second read, and now I want you to pay attention to the quantities and what those quantities represent. The Jasper City Parks Department marks off three fourths of its south rink for family skating. In the north rink, 
three eighths of the space is used for family skating. Both rinks are the same size and shape. Hmm. Well, I see three fourths and three fourths represents how much of the south rink um, is for family skating. And then I see the quantity three eighths and three eighths represents um, how much of the north rink is used for family skating. Boys and girls, that's still a lot of information to process. So I like to make little notes and I like to uh, underline my important parts. So as you do your third read, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm going to underline the important information. Okay, so I've underlined in two different colors and that just helps me to see what part of the information goes with one rink and what part of the information goes with the other rink. So if I look in my green box, I see my south rink on the left and my north rink. I know that three fourths of the south rink is for family skating. So right here, I'm just gonna put three fourths family and then on the right side, I know that three eighths is for family. And I'm just going to make that note. That's going to help me um, to, to make my model. So when I'm talking about the south rink, if I wanna show three fourths, the first thing that I have to do is I have to know how many total parts to break up my circle or my rink. Well, since my denominator is a four, I know that I have to make four equal parts. Okay. And now I know that three of those parts are for family. So I'm just going to go ahead and scribble a little kind of shade. Wow, that's a lot of space for family skating. Okay. In my north rink, I want to show three eighths. So I'm going to start again with my denominator and I want to do eight equal parts. Hmm. Okay. Well, if I do a, a vertical line, I have two parts. So that means I have to break up the rest into four equal parts on each side. So I'm going to do this. Reminds me of a pizza. Okay. Now I have eight equal parts. And I know that three of those parts are for family skating. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade that in. One part, two parts, and three parts. Hmm, I noticed something about those two models. A, which rink has a larger area for family skating? How do you know? Oh, that's easy. The south rink definitely has a larger area. Look at all this space that they have for family skating. The north rink only has this much space. So definitely the south rink. And the reason is three fourths, three parts out of four is greater than three parts out of eight. So three fourths is greater than three eighths. And B, compare the fractions. Now it's time for me to go ahead and put those symbols in. Do I wanna use a less than or a greater than? Well, I have the number three fourths first and then the number three eighths. So listen to me reading each one and think about which symbol you would put in. Three fourths is less than three eighths or three fourths is greater than three eighths. That's correct. Three fourths is greater than three eighths. And my symbol faces that way. Okay, and the reason boys and girls is three parts out of four is almost the whole thing. You have one extra part and three parts out of eight is less. The parts are smaller, but you're also using the same amount of parts. Okay, number two, use the visual model to compare four eighths and five eighths. So I'm gonna use two different colors, shade to show four eighths. So I'm gonna go ahead, one eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths. 
And now I'm gonna pick another color and I'm gonna shade in five eighths. One eighth, two eighths, three eighths, four eighths, five eighths. Okay, so this one was four eighths. This one was five eighths. Which fraction has the larger amount of the whole shaded? How do you know? Well, I know that each part is the same size because they're both, they're each broken up into eighths. And on five eighths, I have one extra part. So five eighths is greater. because it has one extra part, okay? And the symbol that I would use would be a less than because it says 4 eighths is less than 5 eighths. Let's take a look at number three. Emily climbs 2 eighths of the way up the climbing wall. Ryan climbs 2 thirds of the uh, way up the wall. A, show how you can compare the fractions on number lines. Label the distances. Well, boys and girls, you did really well with fractions on a number line, so this should be super easy. We have Emily's climb, and if we see Emily's climb is uh, counting by the unit fraction 1 eighth or counting by eighths, so we can go ahead and label our number line, and we start with 0 eighths when she's at the bottom. Okay, that first jump is 1 eighth. And then I'm just going to label the rest. 2 eighths, 3 eighths, 4 eighths, 5 eighths, 6 eighths, 7 eighths, and then 8 eighths. What do you think it means if she climbs 8 eighths? Yeah, she's climbed the entire wall. She's all the way at the top. And then we have Ryan's climb, and he's climbing by thirds. So he starts at zero thirds. That first jump is one third. Then I'm gonna go ahead and label the rest. Two thirds and then three thirds. And again, if he climbs three thirds of the way, he climbs the entire wall or the whole way up, the whole thing. Um, right, less than, greater than, or equal to two eighths and two thirds. So now we're comparing two fractions. We're comparing 2 eighths, which is here, and we're comparing 2 thirds, which is here. We know that our start point, or our zero, was the same, and we know that our finish point, or our whole, is the same. So now we're comparing which one is bigger. So now take a look at those jumps and see who climbed further. Ryan did climb further. Two thirds is greater than two eighths. So let's put the correct symbol. Two eighths is blank two thirds. Well, two eighths is not greater. It's definitely less. So two eighths is less than two thirds. Who climbs higher and how do you know? Well, Ryan climbs higher. And I know for several reasons, I can use my number line, my visual model um, to prove it. But boys and girls, I also see something else in my fractions. When I'm comparing two eighths and I'm comparing two thirds, the numerator is the same in both. It talks about two parts. I want you to think back about what we discussed about a denominator getting bigger. What happens to those parts as a denominator gets bigger? Imagine dividing your favorite cake into two parts, into four parts, into 10 parts, into 100 parts. What happens to the size of those parts as you divide them into more and more and more equal parts? Well, the more parts you divide them into, the smaller those parts become. So even though Emily climbed two parts and Ryan climbed two parts, Ryan's parts are bigger because his denominator is smaller. 
So before I let you go to complete your independent work, I wanna show you one additional problem where I've set up the visual models on top of each other, just to make it easier to compare the fractions. And since we have a Lego theme today, nothing better than a Lego problem. Scarlett has eight of Tyler's Lego bricks. She sorts them into colors. Now, boys and girls, don't let this fool you. Scarlett has a lot more than those eight Lego bricks of Tyler's. She takes them all the time. Um, but for this problem, she's taken eight Lego bricks. Half of them, half of the bricks are red. One fourth of the bricks are blue. One eighth of the bricks are green and one eighth of the bricks are yellow. Now you see that my numerator is the same for each of those fractions. It's only one part, but my part is different in size because my denominator is different. If you take a look at the top, I have drawn or I have um, printed out your, your, your eight Lego bricks. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I space them out that way purposely um, so that you can see the visual model. So let's take a look at the first one. Half of the bricks are red. Well, I already went ahead and I separated this for you. I separated this first one in two equal parts because we're talking about half. So if half of the bricks are red, then one part out of two are red. I'm going to go ahead and shade that in red. When I look at my second one, it says one fourth of the bricks are blue. And guess what? I shaded in my second model in fourths, in four equal parts. And since they're blue, we're going to go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to shade in one fourth of the bricks blue. I don't have to start at the left, so you know what? I'm gonna shade in this. I'm gonna shade in one part out of my four in blue. The next one says one eighth of the bricks are green. So I'm gonna take a look at this and you guessed it. This um, model is broken up into eight equal parts. And since I'm talking about green, I'm gonna go ahead and shade one part green. And then my last one, one eighth of the bricks are yellow. And my last one looks the same as the, the one that I used for the green because my denominator is the same, it's eighths. So I'm gonna go ahead and shade one of those parts yellow. Do you notice anything about the size of my parts? Well, the smaller the denominator, when the denominator was a two, then my parts were the biggest they could be. And when my denominator was an eight, my parts were the smallest. So one eighth, I know that one eighth, take it black, I know that one eighth is a lot smaller than one half. I also know that one eighth is smaller than one fourth. Okay. What else do you notice? Take a look at those Lego bricks on top. And if I were to bring them down, look at where they would land. So this one will land in here, in here, in here, and in here. This one would land in here and in here. This one would land in here and this one in here. You should be able to visualize if I said to you how many bricks were red. Well, half of the eight bricks are red, so four of them are red. One fourth of the bricks were blue, so one fourth out of all the eight, it's these two, two bricks are blue. One eighth of the bricks are green, so one brick is green and one eighth of the bricks are yellow, so one brick is yellow. Now I want you to pause the video. You're going to go into the check understanding and the on your own. I want you to complete that 
And when you're ready, I want you to come back and join us and let's see how you did. Welcome back, boys and girls. How do you think you did? Well, let's, let's see if there's any misunderstandings. Number one, which spinner has a larger area shaded? Write the fractions, write less than, greater than, or equal to. Well, let's look at the fractions first. On the first spinner, I have one, two, three, four equal parts. So my denominator is going to be a four. And two of those parts are shaded. So my denominator, my numerator, I'm sorry, is going to be a two. So two fourths is my four, first spinner. It's the fraction for my first spinner. And my second spinner, I have one, two, three, four, five, six equal parts. So my denominator is a six. And two of those parts are shaded. Well, I know if I'm breaking it up into six parts instead of four parts, those parts become smaller. So I know that two-fourths is greater than two-sixths. Shade to show each fraction. Write less than, greater than, or equal to. Compare four-eighths and four-sixths. Let's see. So um, the first box is broken up into eight equal parts because my denominator is an eight. And I'm going to go ahead and shade four parts. And this shows me four eighths, okay? My second one is broken up into six parts. Can you already tell that those parts look a little bigger than the parts from the first model? So I'm gonna go ahead and shade one, two, three, four. Wow, I could see that there's more space shaded in four sixths than in four eighths. So four eighths is less than four sixths. Compare four sixths and two sixths. Well, this one's pretty simple without the model. Since my denominator is the same, I know that my parts are going to be the same size. So now all I'm really asking you is what's greater, four parts or two parts? Well, four parts, of course, but let's see. One, two, three, four. That shows me four sixths. And then one, two, that shows me two sixths. And I can clearly see that four sixths is greater than two sixths. Number four, Tim compared total votes for voters aged 18 to 24. In a 2016 election, two eighths of the people aged 18 to 24 voted. In 2018, two sixths of the same age group voted. In both elections, about the same number of votes were counted. In which election did more people aged 18 to 24 vote? Use a concrete or visual model to explain your answer. So boys and girls, this problem has a lot of words in it and a lot of information, okay? It's really important to do your three reads in a problem like this and really understand what it's uh, what the situation is about. So we're talking about an election. We're comparing elections in two different years, in 2016 and 2018. And we're comparing the same age group. So in 2016, two eighths of the people aged 18 to 24 voted. And then in 2018, two sixths. So we're really focusing on that, 2016 and 2018. Well, if I look at 2016, I want to show two eighths, okay? So I want to go ahead and I want to break my first model up into eight equal parts. And boys and girls, you're going to see that these two models, very important, they're the same size. When you're comparing fractions, you want to make your holes the same size. So I'm going to help go ahead and break the first one up into eighths. I'm going to start in the middle. Okay, then I'm going to break each one up into four parts. And it's not going to be perfect, boys and girls. And then in the next one for 2018, I want to do two sixths. So this one I'm going to break in the middle again and then into three parts each side. Okay, and now I want to shade it in. 
2 eighths means 2 parts out of 8. 2 thirds, I mean 2 sixths, means 2 parts out of 6. And I know that since my denominator is smaller in 2 sixths, those parts are bigger. So 2 parts out of 6 is greater than 2 parts out of 8. Um, so the question says, in which election did more people aged 18 to 24 vote? Well, if I draw a line this way, I can see that in 2018, more people aged 18 to 24 voted. Number five, Patty walks two-fourths mile on Monday and three-fourths mile on Tuesday. Show the distances on a number line. On which day does Patty walk a shorter distance? How do you know? So we know that on Monday, she walked three quarters of a mile. Um, oh, I'm sorry. No, no. I know that on Monday, she walked two quarters of a mile and three quarters of a mile on Tuesday. Okay. I'm going to put both of those into my number line. Since my denominator is the same, I know my parts are the same size. So if I start with zero fourths, I'm going to just label the rest of my number line. One fourth, two fourths, three fourths, and four fourths. And now to show Monday and Tuesday, I'm just going to go ahead and put an M for Monday and a T for Tuesday. So two fourths on Monday. So on Monday, she walked from here to here and using a different color on Tuesday she walked three-fourths so on Tuesday she started here and walked to here so I can clearly see uh, that she walked further on Tuesday because three parts out of four is greater than two parts out of four so two-fourths is less than three-fourths so boys and girls how did you do before we get to our Nearpod activity, I just want to wish a very happy birthday to Tyler. He's not here to help me today, um, but he's turning 10 years old. How many of you are going to turn 10 years old soon? Let's wish him a really happy birthday today. Okay, so boys and girls, here's your activity for today. Um, it's a Nearpod activity. So when you go on, if you need the English version, the code is XJUCD. And I'm really happy to see that a lot more of you are completing your activities. Please continue to do so. If you do one a day, um, you don't have a lot of work building up. And make sure you complete every part, the open-ended, the quizzes, anything that I put on the Nearpod. O próximo código é para os meninos e meninas que falam português e o código é ISKAV. Eu quero que vocês completem, está escrito em português. Por favor, tomem o seu tempo para fazer bem. Um, a Miss Souza vai estar a ver as notas e como é que vocês fizeram, fizeram todas as atividades. E para os meninos que necessitam de, um, do código em espanhol, S Z Q D Y A y está todo escrito en español. Ustedes tienen que completar todas las actividades y Miss Coro va a mirar para ver cómo ustedes hicieron. Okay? Good luck. Enjoy. Don't forget click like and subscribe to my channel and I'll see you tomorrow.